good afternoon. Uh, this is the uh, meeting of October 6th, 2020 via teleconference. Um, in compliance with Governor Newsom's executive order N29-20 in response to the ongoing COVID outbreak, the district will conduct the Board of Education's meeting as a teleconference. Given the health risks associated with COVID-19, the Newport Mesa Unified School District has decided not to open the boardroom to the public. I do want to let everybody know, and I will make the announcement again at six o'clock, that the board will be conducting uh, this meeting um, at, in, the, in, in person at the boardroom, with the exception of a couple who have asked uh, to be excused um, given the COVID crisis. Um, for Spanish interpretation, habrá interpretación al español a través del mismo enlace de Zoom. So uh, with that, uh, I begin at three o'clock. Uh, Rosie, roll call. Trustee Floor? Here. Trustee Yelsey? Here. Trustee Black? Here. Trustee Bartow? Here. Trustee Anderson? Here. Trustee Snell? Here. Trustee Matoye? Here. And Mr. Lee Sun? Here. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, community input on closed agenda items only. Uh, Trustee Black, would you please read the following statement? Sure. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board regarding items on the closed session agenda only. Each speaker has three minutes to address the board per board policy 9323. There is a maximum of 20 minutes of comments per topic. The board consent the president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public comment, depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to speak. In the event the number of submitted public comments for a closed session item are anticipated to exceed 20 minutes, the order of comments will be read in a random order until the 20 minutes have expired. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the public, the breakdown of public comments is we have for item 4A, which is a closed agenda item, a threat to public services or facilities, uh, district's COVID responses, we have 73. For uh, non-agenda items, we have uh, uh, two comments. And we also included in this is 18 of the 75 comments that were received were translated from Spanish. Um, because we have a very packed closed agenda item, I am recommending and asking for your consent to stick with the 20 minutes of public uh, comments on the closed agenda item uh, 4A. We will read them until 20 minutes. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can I, can I ask a, a clarifying question? Did sure. all of these come in under that, under 4A specifically, or yes. were they grouped? Okay. No, they were all, they were grouped under under 4A, which is, um, they labeled it threat to the COVID response. There were no okay. other, there were no others. They weren't just the random um, non-agendized items. There are only two. There's only two on non-agenda items, correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So Trustee Anderson, we will begin with you. Um, yes, my first comment is from um, Esperanza Soprano. I would like to leave, I would like you to leave the school buses as they were before. It is very difficult because many times we have two or three children in different grades and we do not have transportation. Great, thank you. Trustee Bartow? Mine is from Erica Cruz. I am worried about the buses because I do not drive and the bus stops are too far away and the one we had in our area was eliminated. I would like to know what is going to happen because my two children need the bus. My question is about transportation for my children. Why is it that we no longer have the bus stop on Joanne? This affects me because I do not drive and I'm very interested in the bus for them. I hope you can give us an answer about the situation, please. Great, thank you. Trustee Black? Um, yes, my uh, community member is Angela Martinez. My concern is about how my children will be able to, to attend school. They are very young and the school is a bit far and I do not have transportation help to help them. Thank you and I hope you take my comment into consideration. Great, thank you. I'm taking my mask off because it fogs my glasses. Um, I have a concern, it's from Concerned Family. 
now that the parents are on one end of the spectrum has had their issues concerned addressed and approved at the special board meeting on the 10th, we now request for the board, of, uh, board to address the issues, concerns of parents on the other end of the spectrum. We have noticed at previous board meetings, some of the questions, concerns have been, um, have been evaded without answers and the new superintendent has basically told these parents to go to another school, Cloud Campus. The invasiveness of answers, um, answering parents' questions Comments made by superintendent stating he spoke to district lawyers and thinking signed waiver signed back in August would give his, his the green light to do as he pleases with our children. And the comment made by new superintendent his intent not to close the school, even if there is an increase of COVID-19 in the school and our community has raised a red flag questioning if the decision being made have become politically motivated and or for personal agendas, hence breaking any trust that parents initially gave to the administrator under the perception of that decisions would be made in the best interests of our children. As we watched board meetings, we were first, uh, were, we were emphatic that the new superintendent and we li listened to public comments, we, we did begin to question why we lost our previous superintendent, principal and athletic director. Serving in the military with 24 years of service, I am as a Marine and my wife serving in the Navy, we have sacrificed, endured much as a family to protect the right of all people, not just a select few, as we've seen with the decisions made by a select few of our board members and the new superintendent, taking the right of our children away to receive their education via continued distance learning or letting students log in and watch teacher instruction online. Ms. Floor, that is the end of the two minutes. Thank you. I'm sorry. That was a very long one. Mine is from Tamara Fairbanks, Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers President. Throughout the past week, the community has been reading letters from various teachers and staff who are concerned about the health and welfare of their students. Although some members of the community have written these employees off as lazy, these people are far from it. These people are fighting for kids' safety because they see the positive COVID cases in our neighboring districts in Irvine and Saddleback. These teachers and staff want to have more time to teach skills to their students and not to be labeled as babysitters. These teachers understand that our kids on the way, in the west side of Costa Mesa live in multi-generational homes and cannot afford to get sick one day because it will affect the entire livelihood. These teachers came, care about what happens to a child after they leave school from a half day of school and have to cross a busy 19th street in order to get home. These workers want to protect the teenagers who have to sit next to a kid who's allowed to go to school unmasked. These teachers know their rooms are not big enough for the 20 kids they may have in a cohort. These teachers saw the workers installing air filters only hours prior, prior to school starting with the TK2 with filters that were not originally advertised. These teachers saw their special education colleagues share PPE with their aides because enough wasn't ordered. These teachers have worked without bathroom breaks, some without lunch, just to fulfill the schedule that was imposed upon them. These teachers know that any adult who had to work in such conditions would not allow this. So why do we allow this for our children? And with all of this, these certificated workers keep students first because they can and have always made a difference. Thank you. Uh, Trustee? Uh, my comment is from Brett Ed Edbright. I am the father of two children in the district, fourth and seventh. I'm a Newport Harbor High School alumni, so is my wife. We support the NMUSD teachers and we ask that the reopening be delayed for grades seven through 12. The plan currently in place seems doomed. There is an adequate amount of student and teacher interaction. When I learned my seventh grader during a two week period of 10 school days would only be face to face with her teachers twice in person and once on Zoom, I realized the plan was inadequate. I, I request that you take further time to come up with a better plan. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Anderson. My comment is from Cynthia Lawrence. Dear Newport Mesa Board, please direct the superintendent and staff to put together a plan for blended hybrid option 
for a blended hybrid option for families at the middle school and high school level for whom the in-person hybrid is not an option due to health reasons. Other districts have managed to implement an option whereby students can continue to take all of some of their classes remotely while still remaining enrolled in Newport Mesa and attached to their normal Newport Mesa campus. This has the triple, the triple benefit of allowing these kids a normal academic load while decreasing the number of kids on campus at a given time, as well as providing a seamless transition to at-home learning if kids need to stay home due to quarantine requirements. The technology exists, the board just needs the will to direct it to be done. Thank you. Thank you. My community member is Jeannie uh, Lim. We should offer live Zoom instructions during asynchronous days. That way the cohort, cohort that is staying at home can tune in to the lesson and teachers do not need to repeat lessons for both cohorts. They can move on to the next lesson. This will give double the instruction time and um, more efficient. Oh, thank you. Trustee Barto. Thank you. Uh, kisses from Kelly E. Bright. This is my reply to your current email regarding the 712 reopening. I personally do not like this plan and think it is not in the best interest academically for our students. For students to keep up with regular classes, AP and honors classes, you need to see your teachers regularly to meet the rigor of our state standards and the demands these classes put on our students. With the set current 7 through 12 hybrid plan, the 7 through 12th graders will only see their teachers two times in person and 10 days in 10 days and one time on Zoom. Regular classes, AP and honor students will not be able to handle these classes when most of the time they will be doing asynchronous work and teaching themselves. Plus, if students have a question for their teacher, their teachers cannot help them or even get back to them in a timely manner because they are busy teaching their cohorts at that time. This is not beneficial to our students. I personally think you need to listen to your seven to 12 teachers and understand that they know what's best for their students. This is why they got into the field of teaching in the first place. They care, have experience, and know what is good for the students. I am also a public school teacher in Orange County, and I strongly agree with pushing back the reopening date for our students in grades seven through 12 and continue to keep Zooming five days a week. With Zoom, students are seeing their teachers and learning more than they would at the hybrid plan. They are receiving instruction on a daily basis and can also get help from their teachers during their support hours. The hybrid plan does not offer this. I know that Zooming has its shortcomings, but it is superior to the hybrid plan because it offers more instructional time, more frequent instructional time, and teacher support hours. Uh, thank you. I have Cami Gina Baldwin. We demand distance learning alternative. Okay, mine is from Sarah B. Please let elementary and secondary students zoom into classes from home. Numbers are going up. Being on campus is not worth the risk. Being on the cloud is too isolating. You opened it for the loudest people who want their kids on campus. Please listen to the rest of us who don't. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Yelsey. Uh, my comment is from Summer Samara. I am concerned with the reopening of the high school schedule. The current schedule presented to parents only allows for one day a week for a student to have contact with a teacher. The schedule does not show any times for help or office hours. There is less instructional time. In addition, I am very concerned for the cleaning that needs to take place between periods and how that will happen in only six minutes. My comment is from Maria Solis. As a single mother, I'm greatly affected because I do not feel safe due to the lack of buses for my son. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Bartow? You're on mute. It is from Kristen Howerton. Dear board, hundreds of parents and teachers are begging you to reconsider the reopening plan or figure out an alternative way for students, especially high schoolers, to stay at their schools and in their current classes without going back to campus. Administrators and teachers have been willing to work on solutions, but they are being stopped by the board. We realize you spent a lot of time and money on the cloud campus and that it is serving some students well, but it is not enough. I cannot fathom why the board would feel the need to hamstring our high schools from working out ways for students to learn their current curriculum from home. The district is forcing kids with asthma, diabetes, cancer surviving parents, elderly family members, and other underlying health conditions to either leave their school, teacher, and chosen classes or attend school in person. There needs to be another option. Administrators and teachers are open to other options. Why isn't the board? If it is some exercise in pride or flexibility, I hope you can reconsider. 
Mr. Lee Simmons, in a previous meeting, you suggested that concerned parents had a couple weeks to get comfortable. Well, it's been a few weeks, we are not comfortable. I know you were hopeful that the cloud school would be the solution for concerned stakeholders, but it is apparent that concerned parties greatly outnumber what you expected and what the cloud school can accommodate for our community. Please reconsider following what Tustin Fullerton and Irvine are doing so that more students can stay at their home school and learn from home. Or please consider extending distance learning as it provides more educational time with teachers. Right now, the hybrid model is a lose-lose. It forces kids on campus from families who would rather have their kids home and provides less instructional time for all students. Kids from vulnerable families or families concerned about an illness that can cause great harm should not be forced to leave their classes and programs and activities and friends. My family is deeply engaged in our school, worked hard on their schedules and IEPs, and should not have to leave because the board is not concerned with making sure all kids have the same educational experience this year. Students with various health vulnerabilities are being punished. When will you admit the cloud school does not meet the needs of the community concern? And when will you listen to the teachers and families in your school and figure out a way for more of us to stay in our schools but learn from home? This frees up space for those eager to learn and allows students from health vulnerable families to feel like their education is actually valued as much as their peers. Thank you. Trustee Black? Um, yes, my community member is Oscar Perez. We need more buses. The prices are too high. We are going through some rough times and prices are super high. Thank you. I have uh, mine is from Yanelli. Um, it is very inconvenient that our children do not have access to the school bus. It is not fair. Parents need help from the school and that the district provides a bus for West Side Costa Mesa. There are many children who are left uh, without their school bus. Mine is from Sandra. Not having access to the school bus is very serious for my daughter. The fact that our children do not have access to transportation makes it very difficult to return to school for many of our families that count on the school bus and you are denying it. My comment is from Jose Valadez. We are very disappointed with the district regarding buses that are not arriving at their respective stops to pick up children, especially the ones for T. Winkle and Adams schools. We are going through this pandemic situation and we want children to return but unfortunately, with the situation of not having school buses, they are in danger when walking or in a bus. All parents need and request from the appropriate district personnel that you, that you please try to help with the inconvenience of us as parents. May God bless you, awaiting a favorable response for all children. Thank you. Trustee Anderson? Yes, my comment is from Susan Ordobordian. Dear school board, please reconsider the decision to start school. It is a plan that will lead to more infections, a, a deteriorating learning experience and lawsuits. Thank you. Trustee Bartow. Mine is from Raina. I need bus transportation and you are not providing it. Thank you. Trustee Black. My community member is Martha. My comment is about school transportation. It is very difficult for me because I do not drive. Husband has to work and the stops she left are a bit far for my daughter to walk alone. I have two more children in elementary school and it is a little difficult in my case. What can we do so that our children have transportation? Thank you. Mine is from Sandra Resendez. Why are there only buses in the morning? Can they also be bused in the afternoon? Thank you. Trustee Mine is from Maria Luis. We would like you to give free school bus passes once again. The next Thank comment you. is from Abraham. We need more buses. Thank you. Trustee Anderson. Mine is from um, Danit. Ben Zavi, we are at an infection point as a community and it is unconscionable that this board of directors, which is tasked with ensuring equal access to education, is basically forcing high risk, high achieving students who do not have their AP classes offered on the cloud campus to choose between their health and their education. Instead of offering the simple solution of live streaming classes that our neighbors in Irvine and Tustin have successfully implemented, this board is fighting hard to prevent Newport Mesa students from having access to this way of learning. It begs the question, why? Does this community lack money or do the people in charge lack a conscience? 
By providing the live stream option, you are not only giving high-risk students the opportunity to continue learning in the safer environment of their homes, but you are also enabling the students who get sick with the virus or other ailments to stay home and continue their education. No one is infringing on anyone's right to go back to school, but for goodness sakes, do the right thing. What other, what all other districts are doing and make live streaming available to us. Thank you. Trustee Barto. Mine is from Jennifer Pollock. We have been a Newport Mesa family for 12 years, Costa Mesa High School for eight, and have always felt lucky for it. Until now, how far the district has fallen. Since new leadership has come in, my students' needs are quite obviously not cared about. Staff seems disposable and our concerns are ignored. Isn't a public school district obligated to serve all students equally? I see this district serving the loud reopen parents, anyone whose needs are met by the cloud campus and leaving the rest to fend for themselves. The cloud campus is completely inadequate for college bound high school kids and does not even have room for the families requesting it, which seems illegal when looking at the state superintendent website. It has two of my daughter's eight classes and the district solution is for her to drop her honors classes, abandon her language, she has plans for a seal of biliteracy and drop her electives, clubs and extracurricular. Or if she wants to preserve her education, she can put her high risk sister in danger. Really? If you are not concerned with the quality of education my daughter receives, what exactly is your purpose? I feel like the district is behaving the way I've taught my daughter not to, just do the bare minimum to get by. While it is not being well received and is not going unnoticed, my daughter works hard to have a shot at a good college and I will not let you take that away from her. Staff and I have spoken are willing Staff I have spoken with are willing to get lessons home to kids via live stream or recording in order to get the high risk kids through this the best way possible, but they say the district will not allow them. You are quite literally standing in the way of high risk children being properly educated and who have so little value for the staff as to not put any testing, tracing, quarantine and public knowledge of cases is beyond shameful. Interesting how the district says to do so violates HIPAA, but the state superintendent site recommends all of the above. You need to either delay reopening or find these kids a solution and greatly improve safety measures for both staff and kids. Most families I know do not agree with school opening at this time. Otherwise, get ready to lose students. I will pull mine before I make her choose between sacrificing her education or her sister. Do better. Thank you. Trustee Black. Um, yes, Nikki Presby is my community member. Please consider the health, welfare, and safety of the actual staff working in the classrooms with up to four to six different groups of teens per day when making decisions about reopening middle and high school. Please consider the needs of students with medical issues and concerns and when moving forward with reopening middle and high school. Please consider the students who will have to quarantine for 14 days after exposure or infection when opting to not live stream Zoom on learn from home um, days. Please consider the entire Newport Mesa Unified School District middle and high school population, staff, parents, and teachers who have expressed deep concern about safety and the best practices for ensuring our students receive the best possible education during the pandemic with the maximum number of instructional minutes. Please consider continuing with the current distant learning model. We can do better than the current level two plan. We need to do better. Right. Floor, that is the end of the 20 minutes. Okay. All right. So we will now, um, thank you. We will move into closed session. Um, the items are 4A, threat to public services or facilities. Item 4B, conference with labor negotiator, NMUSD representative. 4C, public employee discipline, dismissal, release, employment, number 2020. 07 HR 4D public employee discipline dismissal release employment. There will be one readout from closed session for item 4C when we reconvene the public webinar at, 4, at 6 p.m. Um, to begin the regular meeting. Okay, so we will all log out and log back into the closed session. Thank you. In compliance with Governor Newsom's Executive Order N-29-20 in response to the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak, the district will conduct the Board of Education meetings as a teleconference. Given the health risks associated, associated with COVID-19, the Bo Newport Mesa Unified School District has decided not to open the boardroom to the public. 
habrá integración al español a través del mismo enlace de Zoom. However, um, we are broadcasting um, within the district's boardroom. So the board members are in, in the boardroom along with uh, the senior members of the staff and, and Superintendent uh, Russell Lee Sung. So um, I have a readout uh, in closed session. Uh, let me read this. It was moved by Trustee Black and seconded by Trustee Matoye. In closed session, the Board of Education took action to approve the dismissal of classified employee number 202007HR, effective October 6, 2020. The eyes were seven and the nose were uh, zero, no abstentions, no absence. Um, so good afternoon. So um, I need an adoption of the uh, let's stand for a moment of reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance, please. And Trustee uh, Anderson, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Moving on, there has been a request uh, to move item 16A1 by Trustee Anderson to uh, discussion action. So may I have a motion to adopt the agenda as amended? Mm -hmm. Trustee Black, you're a second. I'll second. Trustee Barto is a second. Okay. Uh, oh. President Floor, I just wanna note that we do have two amendments to a couple of items tonight that are being considered. Uh, so if we Correct. can just make note of that uh, before we take action, I just want to. Yes, and they'll be, and, and Mr. Drake, you'll, you'll explain those. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So roll call, please. Um, I put my hand up. Yes. I, also just, I, I, had a, I had a comment. I also just wanted to note that um, there were over 25 comments from parents about busing, concerned for a lack of busing. Um, and so I, I wanted to have that be read in. I've been trying to get that on the agenda and it is, has not been on our agenda the past two meetings. So I just wanted to call that out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to, so roll call please, Rosie. Trustee Floor. Here. Trustee, I mean, yes. Trustee Yelsey. Headphones. Headphones on, please. She's out of the room. Sorry. Oh. That's what it is. <laughs> Trustee Yelsey? Here. Trustee yes. Black? Yes. Trustee Bartow? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Snow? Yes. Trustee Matoye? Yes. Okay. And Okay, so uh, moving on to item 9A, which is the adoption of the minutes of 0 and 0 0 0-9-15-20 and 0 9 May I have a motion, please? Trustee Black, second. Second. Trustee Yelsey. Any discussion? Okay, uh, roll call please, Rosie. Trustee Floor? Yes. Trustee Yelsey? Yes. Trustee Black? Yes. Trustee Bartow? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Snell? Yes. Trustee Matoye? Yes. Great, thank you very much. Microphones off, <laughs> headphones off. Uh, item number 10, uh, very exciting. So uh, Mr. Lee Sung, we're going to turn it over to you. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Well, this is very exciting for us. Um, tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing everyone to our new Director of Risk Management, Jonathan Milby, and, and I see he's um, turned his video on so that everybody can see who he is. Uh, Mr. Wilby has over 20 years of risk management and leadership experience, including the past 13 years with the Orange County Fire Authority. The last seven years, he's had, had the position of risk management for them. And as a risk manager, he has successfully managed multiple tasks within the risk management area and programs, including health and safety, wellness and fitness, workers' comp, all of the things that we truly, truly need in a risk manager. We, this is an area that we have not had in our district for quite some time, and already we are feeling the benefit and seeing the benefits from having us him join us. Um, so with that, I will um, I'll give him the opportunity to speak to all of you. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. I just wanted to say it's nice to meet all of you and what a time to come into a new, or new organization as a risk manager. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited to be your director of risk management. I'm looking forward to working with all of you more in the future. So um, definitely looking forward to it and thank you. Welcome. Welcome. We are thrilled to have you, um, especially that you're settled into the office. So welcome and yeah. You have family, so you can at the when we get to meet in person. I hope you'll bring your family to a board member, so we can you know so we can meet your family as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on. I'm gonna, that we have um, in terms of community input, we had uh, 73 uh, community input on uh, closed session item number 4A, which is the. Uh, threat to COVID, and we only had two uh, public comments on non-agenda items, so they will be read at the end, which was for 19A. So we will we will move on to that. There were 75 total of that. 18 of them were translated into from Spanish. So thank you, um, Javier, again for uh, providing those translation services. So uh, moving on to. Uh, we've already done the community input, uh, so we've already done that. So moving on to item number 12, superintendent report. Mr. Lee Sung. All right, good evening, President Floor, members of the board. I want to uh, start out with something that I'm very proud of, um, and we should be very proud of as a district, and that was the uh, reopening of our elementary schools that occurred uh, this past week. And uh, I hope everybody received the short little video that I uh, sent out to staff, thanking them for their work, but also um, the uh, parents and uh, their patience and flexibility and, and getting their kids to school uh, for the first time, long time coming, six and a half months. And I just want to again reiterate uh, how it, it really was a great day. I had a chance to go visit several schools and got to see uh, kids coming uh, to school with their masks and their backpacks and all the things that we uh, get so excited about the first day of school and uh, watching our staff welcoming our kids back and the great efforts they did because they knew this is the first time for some of the kids ever to be at, at school. And uh, knowing that they've only known each other as little squares on, on uh, pictures in a, in a Zoom setting, uh, but to see them in person was really something special. And, and having a chance to talk to our principals and talk to our, our staff and teachers and a few parents as well, uh, really was, was a great couple of days. I, first on Tuesday with our TK2, and then uh, on Thursday with our grades uh, three through six. Uh, and I, again, I can't uh, thank our staff and our principals and everybody at the district level who worked uh, to, to get our schools reopened and really was a, a, a great, uh, uh, a great experience for me. Um, I do want to uh, segue into Administrators Week. We have an item later on in the agenda as a resolution, and uh, it's the week of the administrators, just like we celebrate a lot of our other uh, employees in the district. Well, October 11th through 17th is the week of the administrator. And I, I need to particularly uh, point this out 
that uh, you know going into administration isn't the most thankful job ever. <laughs> you know, days like the other day uh, last week when we welcome our kids back, that those are the kinds of moments that makes the job really worthwhile. But most of the time, it's long days, working weekends. Um, you know, handling uh, very difficult issues and, and having the burden, the responsibility to lead a school uh, and be responsible for, for our students is an incredible uh, task. And so, uh, and I just want to point out that it is the week of the administrators. I hope that uh, we all take a moment to thank the administrators who lead and support our schools in so many ways. Uh, it really is a, a, a thankless job many times. But I, I guarantee you the people who get into this business and stay in this business and love it, they do it for all the right reasons, all the right reasons. And we've got an incredible group here in the district. And particularly as we are navigating this whole crisis, even more so, even more so. And it's tough. It is really, really tough in this environment. And I, and I really can't be more proud uh, of our group. And so uh, anyways, I just wanted to point that out thank them publicly uh, for all the work they do in leading and caring for our kids and staff and community. Uh, next thing I wanna talk about is the reopening. As you all know, we're preparing very diligently for the reopening of our secondary schools. And I wanna go back just a little bit, just a little bit, because you know, we started talking about reopening way back in June, early June. And we started having meetings and regularly I was, you know, giving updates and we were making decisions along the way. And uh, one of the decisions that we made early on was the formation of the cloud campus, which at the time we were just calling it virtual learning 100%, which wasn't very exciting. They now have the, the, the name as cloud campus. And it was just an idea. And the board approved that with the opportunity for our parents to choose that for their kids, TK through 12. And we jumped on that right away because we had to, and we built that school. And that school is now approaching 2,000 students in our district, led by, by Principal Michael Shaka, Dr. Shaka. And, uh, and you know, they are doing a great job supporting the kids in this environment, and we're really proud of them. And we have given opportunities for our parents recently with this next anticipation of this next move uh, to level two, we've given our parents another opportunity to be part of that. And uh, we're also looking at medical exemptions as well as uh, non-medical exemptions to try to get parents into that school if that's what they choose for their kids. And I do appreciate our district making that decision uh, early on. And we have the staff and the leadership to uh, create that school in a very short period of time. Now for those parents who didn't choose that, if you recall, we built a three-level a, a three adaptable plan, knowing that at some point, we started at distance learning, and at some point we would move to in-person learning. And we talked about the hybrid model back then. And we talked about how when the county became ready to reopen schools, that we would consider doing that. And we stayed true to that, we announced the date, that we would reopen our elementary schools, which was last week, and our secondary schools coming up. So that's where we're at. We're right on the, the cusp of moving to a level two. Now, in preparation for that, uh, there's been a lot of work going on, and a lot of work behind the scenes, a lot of preparation, and now we're getting to the point where we have to implement this and get our campuses ready. So that's the stage we're at. And I do want to acknowledge all the comments and emails and concerns that people are having at this point uh, regarding safety and regarding instruction. But here's the thing, when we made the decision to move to this model and this, uh, this full day hybrid model, uh, we knew that any model that we picked had advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons, no matter what we did. And trust me, trust everybody who was engaged in those discussions, those were very deep, long discussions that many times went around in circles because there's pros and cons with each. And so one of the benefits, obviously, of in-person is to be in-person, to get students back to school in-person with teachers, with their, with their peers, 
and get back to a, a little step towards normalcy. And so that obviously is a, is a big factor. Also, the social emotional aspect of, again, being around other people and the limitations with distance learning. Even though I'm very proud of what we've done and the work and the progress that our teachers have made in that setting, it does have its limitations. So we moved to a full day model in secondary rather than a half day model. And this is something that's important I, I wanna mention, is the fact that the full day model allowed us to limit the number of classes that we have each day in a block setting. So they're longer periods and therefore there's fewer transitions. And that was one of the key elements of going with that model because it allowed kids to, or students to not have to transition to too many classes compared to a half day where we'd have two groups uh, coming on a campus. In the secondary, that's a lot of students uh, transitioning on and off the campus. So it, it was a very deliberate decision, but also knowing that there are some, uh, uh, some, some disadvantages and the disadvantages is more frequent uh, contact. And we're hearing that and I understand that but I also want people to understand that we chose the full day model and recommended that because of the uh, safety and the um, limitations of how many transitions there are in a day. Um, I also want to acknowledge the uh, comments that uh, have been coming in about the, the desire to have some type of instruction going on simultaneously with kids in a class, in person, with instruction going on uh, at home. And that is a concept I, I want people to understand that we are having discussions about that with our principals, principals with teachers, uh, district with NMFT. We want to explore how we can engage our kids who are at home the best that we can. And I wanna make sure that people know that we are looking at ways that we can do that. But there are significant challenges with that. Even us as board and executive cabinet, as we're preparing to try to find a way to hold this meeting in person, as well as people on Zoom, there's uh, a lot of technology challenges. So I want to make sure that we keep in mind the challenges of doing that, uh, particularly with our teachers trying to deliver high quality instruction for the kids in class and engage the kids at home. But I, I just want to make sure that people know that we have heard that request and we consider or we continue to look at ways that we can uh, enhance that. So finally, uh, I am putting together a video message about safety and uh, just as some very important reminders. So I'm gonna give you a few highlights of that. And uh, the, uh, certainly everything that we do is aligned to the uh, Department of Public Health and CDC. And that's what we're working and, and have been working towards uh, those uh, guidance and, and procedures. And we know that there are various degrees of opinions in terms of which rules people like or which rules people don't like. And I just have to impress upon everybody in our district, whether you're a staff member, a parent, or a student, or even a visitor, that we need to adhere to the rules and some of the key things, and I know people know this, but it's worth repeating how important it is for everybody, whether you're an employee, a student or a staff member, that if you're sick and we have symptom charts and all symptom trees and all of those kinds of things, if you're sick, please do not come to school and, and come to work. Wear a face mask like we are doing here to cover your nose and your mouth at all times, except when eating and drinking. Uh, when sneezing, coughing, cover your nose and mouth, avoid touching your, uh, or wash your hands often, at least 20 seconds, and keeping that distance of six feet. And also when kids start coming back to school, they're gonna see different directional arrows and different rules that you gotta walk on this side of the hallway, you have to enter here or exit there, and we wanna make sure that everyone adheres to those rules as well. And then in terms of safety protocols, uh, we, adopted the instructional models with safety in mind to have kids, only half the kids on campus at one time. And I talked a little bit about the secondary full day block schedule and the rationale for that. Uh, we also are making sure that the seating within the classroom has the proper spacing, that they're configured 
properly. Uh, we're eliminating or reducing sharing of equipment or materials. And if they are gonna be shared, that they need to be cleaned in between sharing. And we're limiting the uh, uh, visitors coming on campus. And if they do come on campus, they need to also adhere to the rules of wearing a face mask and staying socially distanced. And if students don't bring their face mask, we've got face masks waiting for them and to make sure that they have that before they enter the campus. Uh, we've provided clear plastic screens for all elementary students and all teachers of the district. We're doing a visual wellness check, a daily visual wellness check for students. And if they're sick, we're sending them home. Uh, we're also providing a variety of PPE at our school sites for our employees. And depending on the job that they do, will determine the level of PPE that they use. But we have face masks, we have KN95s, N95s, face shields, gloves and gowns. We have hand sanitizers. We're also um, uh, not scheduling any large events right now. We're curtailing any large events. Uh, custodial services, as I've reported before, have been increased both in the daytime and at nighttime. Our ventilation systems have been adjusted. We, we're starting the ventilation systems uh, earlier to get that circulation going before rooms are occupied. And we have replaced and upgraded our filters prior to our school openings. Uh, grab and go lunches are now the thing so that we don't have kids congregating and waiting in line. They can get their food and, uh, and move on. Uh, we also have multiple entrances and exits to ease the congestion. And we have signs and visual reminders throughout the campus on the walls and on the floors to remind everybody to follow the rules. So anyways, there's a number of measures, as you can see, that we're doing. Uh, we're diligently getting those all ready before we open up our schools. So uh, that's my, my quick report. Maybe not so quick this time, but I felt it was important that I get that message out as much as possible. Okay, thank you, President Ford. Uh, thank you, Superintendent Liefsong. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to uh, Karen Yelsey. Uh, Trustee Yelsey is the person that is, um, we have the student board member report. So I want you to introduce because we have a new student board member and uh, this is a new process. And so Karen, could you just introduce uh, Elizabeth to, our, to it from the Cloud Campus and then um, tell them how many of the board members are here tonight? Uh, yes, thank you, President Matoy, uh, President Floor. <laughs> um, it's it's actually very nice. I meet with the student board members the day before the meeting to go over the agenda and talk to them, and it's great. They are so savvy on Zoom meetings, and they don't like long meetings, so they want to get to the point, get through it, and it's wonderful. And they got all their information. We do. I'm I am pleased to say we do have a new school board member that joined us. Uh, last week, but she has not been at our any of our meetings yet. Her name is um, Elizabeth Levy, and she's from the Cloud Campus. So um, I would like to introduce her to uh, just give a little background on herself. And then after that, we have three panelists, student board member panelists tonight. And the lead panelist will be Maddie. Um, from Maddie McNamara from, from Back Bay. And so being the lead panelist, she will give a report, but she will also be included in any votes that we take. And then the two other members who will be speaking tonight are Luca and Troy. Um, and I, as always, will be excited to, to hear what they have to say. So first I'd like to introduce uh, Elizabeth and she can just say hi and give a little background where she came from before she was at the Cloud Campus. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Leiby. I am a senior on the Cloud Campus. I came from Newport Harbor High School where I ran cross country. I swam and I was a part of AVID for three years. Although it was a tough decision to move to the Cloud Campus, I have definitely not regretted it. I couldn't be more excited in these seven weeks. We've created our mascot, created clubs, and events for Red Ribbon Week and for the future. A couple of days ago, I conducted a survey of 36 students and 80% of the students rated the school a seven or above on a scale from one to 10. The main critiques were about social interaction and looking back on past work. Besides that, the students did not fail to rave about the excellent communication between the students and the teachers. 
I want to thank you for allowing me to represent the Cloud Campus. Thank you. I can already tell you that uh, Elizabeth has already reached out to me because um, I had a couple of girls in my Girl Scout troop who were asked about National Honor Society and Junior National Honor Society. And so Elizabeth is part of ASV as well for the Cloud Campus. And so she has reached out and she is working with uh, Dr. Shaka about getting that established at, for the Cloud Campus as well. So welcome, Elizabeth. We're thrilled to have you. Okay. Okay, now we'll start the reports and we'll start with Maddie. Hi everyone, my name is Madeline. Uh, I represent Back Bay High School. Our questions for our reports for this board meeting were, what are you most looking forward to coming back to school and how do you think distant learning will change education moving forward? What, I mo what I'm most looking forward to coming back to school would most likely be seeing all my friendly teachers and my friends. Also, I'm looking forward to the communication part of it. Instead of going through texting your teachers through emails or different types of websites like Google Classroom, we can actually finally ask them the questions face to face, even though we can't get too close. At least I can understand things a whole lot better. Because I'm more of a visual in person learner than an online one myself and the same with a lot of the other students that go to my school. So I'm just looking forward to that face to face interaction, even if it's not super close to each other. And I think that distant learning will change education moving forward in many different ways. It has opened up a lot of opportunities for a lot of different types of students. From our college students to our youngest students, it has opened up a new way of learning. Easy, it's easier for a lot of our, let's say, traveling students or busy students or some students that are afraid of the virus. We have students that have also fallen off the wagon or are about to and are having a hard time getting back and can't do the work because they're busy traveling or jobs or extracurricular activities or the virus. And with distant learning or cloud school, we can make it easier for those students to pay attention and keep up. This has recreated homeschooling in a whole new way. So at least something good came from this whole pandemic. Thank you, Maddie. And next we'll have Luca from Costa Mesa High School. Hello. Okay, so this is a report for Costa Mesa High School. Going back to school under hybrid learning is proving to be a very challenging operation as expressed by many students, including myself. And some students feel that hybrid learning might have an opposite effect on kids, since there will be little difference between virtual and hybrid in, uh, in reference to working on computers in class. Many, many of my friends are already hanging out and many of other people, I know their friends are also hanging out together since the restrictions on the quarantine are being lifted. So for them going back to school in such an environment does not seem as necessary. And the transition to hybrid also seems a little bit rushed to a number of students I spoke to as what we what we'll be doing in school seems a little confusing or unclear at this time. Apart from that, students are looking forward to being able to see their friends for longer periods of time physically and not having to stare at the screen for that long. Also, many students are excited to come back to band and physical activities and feel that more things will get done in a classroom than virtually. They believe distance learning will have effects on in-person instruction, as in the short term, it will be more uncomfortable for new incoming students who are used to talking to teachers online. And some students also think distance learning may reduce prices for education in the long run, as materials can be accessed online without having to pay as much for digital versions of textbooks. This concludes my report. Thank you, Luca. And then we'll have Troy from Corona Del Mar High School. All right, good, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Troy. I'm from Corona Del Mar High School. And I would just like to say that um, while well, going back to school for the first time in more than six months is going to be quite interesting, to say the least. Um, I think a lot of mixed emotions there. Um, so I don't want to talk too much about distance learning, because I think a lot of what I said previous board meetings still holds up. Um, 
but I, I do feel obligated to discuss what I think the entire community is talking about, which is, you know, the hybrid model, uh, the secondary hybrid model in particular. Um, I really want to address this from the student perspective, and I, I've noticed a common theme underlying a lot of the, um, what may appear to be separate arguments for, uh, for or against hybrid model. And the number one thing that I've noticed is the student support. There is no student support system currently in place in this hybrid model. And just, just so I could um, address the arguments and show how they connect to student support, uh, one of the big things that have been addressed was, or have been discussed, is the reduction in instructional minutes. And really, our big goal is to cover the full curriculums, right? So, um, less instructional minutes just means more self-learning and more self-teaching for the kids, um, because we still have to cover the curriculum at the same pace. So, going off of that, um, and when we talk about student support, that's related in a sense that, um, you yeah. won't be there as long to help. In addition, it's the same thing about meeting with the classes only three times over two weeks. Again, it's the same deal with um, student support. Your teacher's not there as much to help you with the material. You're doing more on your own. Same exact thing, office hours. There are zero office hours currently in place. There is no way to um, work with your teacher one-on-one -on -one. and overall, that's going to make people fall even more behind because you have less students or you have less time with your teachers, less interactions, and there's no way for you to work one on one to try to catch up. Um, again, that's student support. I really want to reiterate that all of these are really the same um, argument. And it's about supporting our students and their learning. Um, again, and when we talk about the possibility of uh, concurrent zooming into class, again, that's also student support because we have to. Um, we have to do a lot of the material on our own, and if the teachers are there to provide more instructional minutes, again, student support, teachers being there for the students um, to, to cover the curriculum at the same pace that we have to be going at. Um, another, another fear of mine, and I think a lot of people, is um, what happens when people get sick, COVID, flu, cold, anything. Um, because of the lack of support system in place, there are people that are going to be going to school anyways because, like sick people are going to be going to school anyways because they feel that they, they need to be there because that's the only time they have to interact with their teachers. So um, even if students come, to, come sick, it might not be because the parents made them, it might be because the students themselves feel that they have to be there because the, um, they, they need to get the instructional minutes. So overall, I think from a broad perspective, here's like what I believe the students and the teachers are struggling with here, is that this is a student support issue. And if we do not support the students like this, we are going to fall, like students are gonna fall even more behind than they already are on online school. And this is something we really need to address. I think student learning is the number one priority for schools. And I know students that are genuinely scared of hybrid, not because of safety, but because of fear they're going to fall behind because they can't catch up, because there's no way for them to um, interact with their teachers and get the material that they need at the right pace, because not everybody can self-teach and do all of that. And if, if there is a single thing that we can feasibly address, because the reality is we have cloud school and we have ways to um, address some of the, a lot of the concerns that people are having. But if there's one thing that we can feasibly address as a district, um, it is this student support. And there, there's not one solution. I know there's a lot of talk about um, Zoom, like Zooming at the same time, and that, that is one valid solution that many districts are doing. But um, as uh, the superintendent put, th these are not going to be all perfect solutions, and there are going to be solutions that do have drawbacks, as usual. But um, I think it's important to note that there, is, there will not be a full, complete solution without drawbacks. But we can do, we can take steps to make sure that the, um, that we can have even a little student support, even if that's directing the sites to um, change the bell schedule a bit to offer just a little office hours. Again, the, we, are, we are trying to just, we, we really wanna do as much as we can to provide the student support given the constraints that we are working in. And I do wanna say one last thing is that hybrid is new for all of us. I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot of research done from the past decades on uh, how hybrid school should go. 
And there are going to be challenges that are going to come up no matter what. And I think it's really important that we do not stop on October 12th. Like we do not say like, that's, that's it. That's our hybrid plan. Like we really need to be adaptable. Even like if we keep going and by the end of the semester, we're still on hybrid, maybe, maybe we need to adjust for the second semester and like figure out what that hybrid model is going to look like so that we address these things. So um, in conclusion, I just hope the district really takes our concerns in consideration. Um, to sum it up, it's all about student support and having, making sure that everybody's, um, everybody's keeping up with the pace of material. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. And I think we all hear you. So appreciate all your reports. Thanks. Thank you. And then our, our next meeting will also include um, the other three board members. Um, and uh, Maddie will be sticking on because as, as uh, Trustee Yelsey said, she will be voting on all of the items on the agenda other than anything that we've got regarding uh, personnel. So next we're gonna move to the uh, item 14, which is the Harbor Council PTA president uh, report, and that's Lisa Bowler. Good evening, President Floor, Superintendent Lee Sung, and everybody in attendance. Um, good to see you all again. I have a few things to report. I want to um, make sure everyone's aware of the um, collaboration between Newport Mesa and Harbor Council PTA with the Parent Education Series. The first virtual parent education meeting is gonna to be tomorrow night, October 7th from 6 to 7.30. And it's gonna be via Zoom. And the topic is mindfulness and self-compassion for parents. Sounds very interesting. And um, the link is on the Newport Mesa website. And so hopefully you can uh, join in. You just need to um, click on the link and it'll get you there. Our other um, item that we want to make sure everybody is aware of is on the following night, October 8th, Thursday, from 6 to 9 p.m. is the Harbor Council Newport Mesa School Board Candidates Forum. And that is um, all the people who are on the ballot running for school board members. Um, our Harbor Council um, Ledge um, VP, uh, Michelle Bartow, is um, putting all of this together. And we're having our fourth district PTA um, advocacy chairman, Bev Berryman, doing um, the moderating for that. So if anybody's interested in attending, all you have to do is go on um, the, um, go on the website and you'll see the link, http um, dot dot slash bit dot ly slash harbor count, HCPTA 2020 and register there and you will get a link to be able to get the um, information to attend the um, forum. So hopefully those interested will um, get um, some very good um, questions in for our candidates. And the other thing I wanted to report is California State PTA has taken a support position on two of the propositions. Number 15, which they state is more money for the schools and local communities, and Prop 16, which restores critical and equal opportunity policies um, in state hiring, contracting, and education. So P California State PTA recommends yes on those two propositions. And I want to let you guys know that um, our PTA membership is at 2,769, with over 1,900 of those being from TOTEM, which is our online membership platform. And again, I want to recommend to everybody that you join PTA, whether you're a current parent, supporter, community member, whatever, school board member, of course, district employees. Um, if you go to jointotem.com, you can um, go straight to um, um, whatever school you would like to join. I believe we still have six of our schools that actually aren't on TOTEM, but the others are. 
and it takes less than five minutes to pick your school or schools and join. Um, and it tells you what the dues are. So um, if anybody is interested, join PTA, join totem.com. And I just want to commend, I've only had any um, experience with elementary education. I've done um, Zooming from home with my first grade grandson. And today I actually went to campus to pick him up after school. And I have to say the process was very easy. And it was nice to see everybody there with their masks on. The kids were spacing well and everything just seemed to be looking like it was going, you know, extremely smooth. So anyway, that's my Harbor Council report. And thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lisa, for that. I also, again, would encourage anybody to join the PTA. What's also lovely about the totem is that you can make a donation. So anybody who is interested can actually select um, and, and, and also augment a donation. And uh, Mr. Lee Sung, can we have the, can we advertise, are we allowed to put on there the debate on our website so that they could, because the only way I found out about it was through the uh, Stu News, where I could click on the register. And, and if they don't know how to navigate, is there a way that we can put it on um, and put down that there's a, there's a candidate forum on our website? So, I believe it's a, if it's a PTA event, uh, we can share that with our PIO office and use our Peach Star uh, system. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you, Lisa. We're now moving to our presidents of, of our, our union. So the person we'll start with uh, is uh, Pam Saunders, who is president of CSEA. So Pam. Good evening, President Floor Board, Superintendent Lee Sung, Cabinet, and guests. First, thank you for this opportunity from CSEA. First and foremost, we'd like to thank all of our classified employees throughout our district. We are very grateful to every classified employee for doing their part and all their hard work. We are thankful that the district has taken the time to listen to us regarding the reopening of schools for in-person instruction and the effects involved for our members in guaranteeing that our employees' safety is the number one priority during these uncertain times. We sent out another survey to gauge how our classified employees feel in regards to students returning for in-person instruction. Received a very, we received a very significant response rate from our members. At this time, we are still very concerned about safety at our schools and work sites. And with the return of secondary students, we have even more worries. Some of these concerns include our members being tasked to enforce social distancing, having the proper PPE, which members still cannot access at sites or are on back order, and the difficulty for some students to remain masked while in the confines of classroom or at lunch. Unfortunately, classified can no longer wait on the district to provide the necessary safety supplies and steps to make them feel protected at work and have taken it upon themselves to acquire the appropriate protection equipment themselves. We were promised that we wouldn't start in-person instruction until it was safe to do so and that all of the safety precautions were in place for students and staff. And unfortunately, that is not the case. We presented our issues to the district leadership and our concerns and requests are still outstanding. We will also email the board this list of outstanding concerns for their reference. We are very disappointed that as it appears, you are not supporting classified employees and students we serve. We have been working in these hazardous conditions since the beginning of the pandemic. Classified employees want to work, but we want to work in a safe environment. Thank you again for the opportunity, CSEA Chapter 18. Thank you so much, uh, Pam. Um, and now I'm going to introduce, and I wanna make a public apology to uh, NMFT. I've been calling her uh, them an association and they are actually a federation. 
So I want to apologize and I will try not to do that again. And so I'd like to introduce Tamara Fairbanks, president of the uh, Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers. Tamara. Thank you. Thank you, President Floor, trustees, honored guests. Um, CFT and many organizations um, are supporting a measure that I hope that we can support also. Proposition 15 is a measure that will bring approximately $2 million to Newport Mesa. This measure does not affect residential property or small businesses. It simply closes a tax loophole that only affects the top 10% of corporations in California. With this measure, you can see a long-term investment in public education, see a slight decrease in taxes for small businesses, and it will provide MUSD the necessary resources needed for mental health for all of our children. Thank you to the special educators, elementary teachers, and certificated personnel who have worked tirelessly in order to provide a tiny bit of normalcy this week. We know the amount of work you put forth on a daily basis and we commend you for being on those front lines. It was a challenging week to navigate the first week. Te teachers and certificated staff prep classroom, set up plexiglass barriers, Dodge men on roofs installing HVAC filters. Some even worked without bathroom breaks. But in spite of all of that, yet they keep their students first. And, and they love, because they love their students, they love what they do. And I just want to thank all of our certificated staff for your sacrifice and everything you have done this week. Thank you, Tamara. And again, on behalf of the Board of Education, we want to thank both the Federation and your members as well as CSEA for their, it was a, it was a very smooth opening, um, one of our smoothest in spite of all of the challenges that we did. And we wanna thank, we wanna thank our teachers and our classified for providing that education to our, our elementary schools. Thank you. So now we are moving on. We are now moving on to discussion action items. Uh, item number 15A, agree, uh, approve agreement with Yale University for Ruler Institute online training and support for the 2021 and 21 22 school year. Uh, Dr. Jockham. Great, thank you, President Floor, members of the board, uh, Mr. Lee Sung, and, uh, and all those assembled here and on Zoom. Um, we th we're thankful for the opportunity to, uh, to give you an update on where we are with our social, emotional, and mental health support for students. You may recall that in February, way back when in February before COVID, uh, we sat here in this boardroom and we presented uh, on behalf of Student Support Services a vision uh, along with our um, Ed Division colleagues on a multi-tiered system of support. And one of the areas in the multi-system, multi-tiered system of support that um, wasn't sh as sure enough and as strong as the others was really what we're doing uh, for mental health and for the social and emotional learning needs of our students and also how to support our staff with their social and emotional learning needs. And one of the things that we had discussed at that time was looking at evidence-based um, information curriculum training that we could do with our staff and with our students um, to move this this learning forward and um, even though we had uh, got knocked off kilter a little bit with with covid we are um, we are moving forward we have kristen henry who was our coordinator of mental health and wellness and um, she's going to give us just a quick update on what RULER is, just as a reminder, so you know what we're going to plan on doing moving forward with our elementary schools. And uh, just as a quick update on the board agenda, it, it lists 10 elementary schools, but Davis Elementary is also one of the schools participating. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't, it was just left off the agenda. So I'm going to turn it over to Kristen Henry, Russell, she may want to share um, the screen, if possible, um, to show a couple of slides. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jockham. Oh, and um, good evening, President Floor, members of the board, and Mr. Lee Sung, and distinguished guests. I think that I have the ability to share. Are you all seeing my presentation? 
sometimes I start talking and it's not showing. But so yes, I'm here. Thank you for the opportunity to give you a little bit of information in regards to RULER, uh, which does come out of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. It's um, an evidence-based social and emotional um, learning program. It's a, really an approach, a comprehensive approach that supports the entire school community and ultimately our district community in understanding the value of emotions, also building skills of emotional intelligence and creating and maintaining the positive school climate. And why do emotions even matter? Why are we even so, why am I so passionate and always talking to you guys about this? Um, and really research as well as brain science and even just your own personal experience can inform um, the knowledge that emotions impact attention, memory, our ability to make decisions, um, being creative to really generate novel ideas and thoughts, um, our mental and physical well being, um, as well as our ability to establish and maintain good quality relationships. And kind of our bottom line, which is academic as well as workplace performance. Um, so that's why they matter a little bit. Um, they matter to everything and really how we feel at school each day matters. And I um, was writing this and I wrote how we feel at school each day matters. And I thought really it's, this is about everyone. This isn't about just our students learning. This is about um, our culture as a district. How we feel really impacts everything that we do. And this is interesting research that came out of um, the RULER program out of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. So they had polled 22,000 high school students across the nation. This was pre-COVID, so about a year ago. And they were asked, how do you feel? Give us your three emotions. And these were the three top emotions. When students were asked, how do you feel each day at school? They feel stressed, they feel tired, and they feel bored. Um, that's those, the, the three top ones out of all of the emotions. And then they asked teachers and, and district administrators. So in that, that state was a little bit smaller, just over 6,000. And they asked, how do you feel each day at school? And this was the response. Um, the top three responses were frustrated, overwhelmed, and stressed. Um, and, and even if we weren't in the business of um, building interpersonal strengths. And if, even if we had icy, cold hearts and we didn't care about how people felt every day, um, if we were just in it for academic success and work performance, these aren't the responses that we need to make those conducive, um, the, the conducive um, environment for those outcomes. The reality is we're in it for the whole child and, and the whole person. Um, so that's what makes it extra important. Now, when I did the um, back to school, the mandatory trauma responsive um, training that all the teachers did, um, one of the exercises that they needed to do was use a mood meter, which is actually a component of this program, and type, what, how are you feeling right now? And these were um, the hundreds of responses that created this, this word cloud. So this is our Newport Mesa data of how our teachers were feeling, um, just before the return to school. And you'll see, again, the tired, drained, uneasy, some optimism, um, but overall, really a, a lot of anxiety and, and um, unease with our staff, too. So, um, so what is RULER? And, and what does it even do? How can it do all these magical things I'm talking about? Well, overall, it's an approach that teaches the skills of emotional intelligence, and it teaches it to everybody. It has a component in it that's adult social emotional learning, and that's a part of the training. As you're learning this information and how to form these skills in, in children and students, um, you inadvertently cultivate them in yourselves as well. So um, RULER stands for the ability, the first part is really recognizing the emotions in yourself and in others. And then learning to understand what are the causes and consequences of our emotions. So when I act a certain way, what's the outcome of that? Um, there also is the ability to label your emotions accurately. So part, each grade has um, 15 target vocabulary emotions each year, um, as well as 15 supplemental activities that are integrated into academics. We know that that's a, a huge component of effective social emotional learning is that it's not a one-off. This isn't a, I'm gonna pull you and teach this, this instruction. It's, we're layering it through all of our activities throughout the day. Um, and then ultimately learning to express our emotions appropriately and the end goal of regulating our emotions effectively. 
So there are four primary anchor tools, and, and then like I mentioned, there is the grade level curriculum, but that's kind of the afterthought. Initially, it's really about establishing an awareness of these four anchor tools, and those create the school culture that is kind of, it's kind of priming the pump for the, the curriculum. I can see you leaning forward to take a closer look. Um, so there just are four, four basic ones. The first one is the, um, the charter, and that's your agreement that you have with, um, with your school or your staff or your classroom or your district of what is, it, what is the environment that you wanna create? And can we come up with some understandings of, of what we, we wanna to do together to establish that environment? And then there's the meet, mood meter, which is um, a, a tool that we use to identify and learn to label our emotions. We've been using this a lot with our administrators um, as we start our, our PDs and, um, and people are using it in their classrooms already. And then another anchor tool is the meta moment where um, we learn to feel our emotion, identify it, and kind of create that pause between the stimulus and the response because that's the magic in, in, in learning self-regulation is growing the space between the, oh, I have an impulse and now I'm going to react. And then when all of these aren't working and we things still go sideways because we're all human, um, they have the blueprint, which is a great restorative practice of how to problem solve and come up with a plan um, when things go awry. So how do we do this? How do we do the training and what are the components of it? And there really are three components. The first being what would take place this year, um, the staff personnel and professional learning components. So a small team, participates in the Training Institute. Um, this year it's all virtual, which is great. And um, that team learns the principles, the tools of emotional intelligence. They work with a coach from Ruler and they design um, their implementation plan specific for their school and their team. And then throughout the course of the year, they, they integrate those four um, components as well as providing the introductory training to their staff so that then in year two, um, there's going to be that classroom instruction part. Um, so you, the students know, the school knows, the culture all understands this, um, those foundation pieces of Ruler, and then they implement the classroom instruction. Um, again, it's grade level content, it's aligned with the social, emotional, and academic standards, and, and it's integrated in the existing curriculum. And then the second component, which was so huge to us as we were looking through the evidence-based curriculum, uh, the evidence-based social emotional curriculum, um, we really knew it was important to have something that brought in and supported our families because while we can work on this at school, this is a, this is a whole child, this is a whole life, this is everybody working on this um, together. So um, in addition to opportunities for parent education, there's also concurrent content that we will provide with the, with the um, with our home partners to to also integrate and i love this this was a little picture that was in a classroom that i saw where they're doing the this was solomon's family's mood meter and when they opened it up inside were the things that he could do when he was in different um different stages of the mood meter and we're all be speaking this common language uh, and a common approach which is really where the power is in in cultivating these skills and then the um third leg of I'm stuck. There we go. Huh. I guess that's it. <laughs> I guess there isn't a third one. Just kidding. There definitely is. Um, so the third component is about, um, I almost like the back of my hands too. It's, it's about um, integrating it together. I'm so sorry. I think that I hid the wrong slides for myself. We have the stuff and then the classroom instruction. Oh, you know what? I've numbered it two twice. Ah, I always make big mistakes in public places. <laughs> so this was the third component, um, is the family engagement component. So it's the, the classroom uh, instruction, it's the, the professional learning this year with the whole team, um, first with the small team and then implementing, and then the, um, finally the, the parent and family engagement. And that is over the course of the two years, um, we work alongside with the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence and under their 
coaching and supervision in our implementation. And that is it. And so what we're looking at is, um, is for each school site, I believe they'll have a team of four people and it is the um, principal and uh, typically the school psychologist and then an upper grade and a lower grade um, general education teacher to be a part of kind of their core team. And it somewhat mirrors for those who were here when the district initiated the um, positive behavior intervention um, series, uh, PBIS. We did it in, um, they did it in cohorts and tiers of, of implementation. So um, ultimately our plan is that this will go uh, elementary, middle, and high school. It'll go all the way up and be used throughout our district. But we also know right now that we, um, we need to focus on the social and emotional um, pieces with our, with our um, earliest learners and get them involved. So after, after this year, we're looking at bringing on, you know, the, hopefully the rest of our elementary schools in, in, you know, in the next year. You know, we're hoping we don't have to wait two years to start the next cohort, that we can have them staggered by a year, but we're going to just play it and see how this year goes with it. So we're very excited for this, and, and we would um, ask the board to support this, um, this contract. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Okay, so we have item 15A, approve agreement with Yale University for Ruler Institute online training and support for the 20. 20, 2021, and 2021-22 school years. Are there any comments or questions? Uh, yes, Trustee uh, Barto. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I'm just really excited to see this come through. I remember when uh, we went to the MTSS conference a couple years ago when I came on, and it was really uh, great because I remember seeing something years before about sort of that grid with the four colors and the zones of regulation and kind of a visual cue. So I'm really excited to be able to bring this to our district. I think it's going to um, really help and impact a lot of families, especially who knew how much we would need this. And I'm so glad to see that we're bringing it. So thank you for your hard work on this. Terrific. Any other questions? Uh, Sarah? I move adoption. Okay. Trustee Metoyer moved. Second. Trustee uh, Yelsey, I, second. Uh, I have a question. You have a question, Trustee uh, Anderson? Well, I raised oh, my I'm sorry, Vicki. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, is this um, as similar to PBIS? Uh, did this, the 10 schools that were chosen were, uh, I know with PBIS, the, we, we let the schools, it was the schools that volunteered that um, that did it first. Is, was that the same way um, in how the schools were chosen or was there another um, criteria? They all, the schools self-selected. Uh, they were given the information about the, the training and the, you know, the commitment they would be making. And um, so we had several uh, elementary schools that wanted to be a part of it. And then um, once, once we knew what we were doing with COVID and coming back, some of them just opted to say, this is not the year for us to start that. So um, there's 11 schools altogether um, and every school wants to do this at some point. So um, these are just the ones right now it worked for them and for their situation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trustee Anderson. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, echo what Trustee Barto said. Thank you so much for um, allowing that many students to be involved. I know sometimes there's pilots and it's three or four students. And so I'm really excited to see the outcome of having this many students or um, schools go through this at one time. I think it has um, not only student impact, but family impact. And I love that, that holistic approach. So thank you. Again, uh, Sarah, could you just, for the benefit of the public, could you list the schools? I noticed that every single um, high school zone has uh, schools in it. So if you could list it, because many people don't have the agenda. It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. So perhaps that when, when you go to your remarks, you can, you can mention it. 
Yeah, we, we do need to state for the record that there is one school that was inadvertently left off yes. that needs to be added uh, for the record. So we want to make that amendment, amendment. before uh, the board officially takes action. So, uh, Trustee Matoye, would you uh, move it to be amended, please? And it's amended to add Davis Elementary. Perfect. And uh, Trustee Yelsey, you're okay with that too? Yes. Okay, roll call. Student Board Member Maddie McNamer. Here. Yes. Thank you. Trustee Floor. Yes. Trustee Yelsey. Yes. Trustee Black. Yes. Trustee Bartow. Yes. Trustee Anderson. Yes. Trustee Snell. Yes. Trustee Matoye. Yes. Terrific. Thank you. Motion carries 7 0 with student board member uh, Maddie McNair voting yes as well. Moving on to item 15B, approve management, confidential, and supervisor compensation and benefits for 2019 and 2020, addressing implementation of the collegiate calendar. Uh, Mrs. Olson. Thank you, President Floor, Vice President Yelsey, board members, uh, Superintendent Lee Sung, colleagues, and um, our fine audience tonight. Um, last year, you might recall in February, we reached a settlement um, that solidified the implementation of the collegiate calendar. And at, when that occurred, we then returned to the table to the negotiations with CSEA and recognized the, the impact of that implementation with CSEA. It had already been recognized in the NMFT tentative agreement that was approved in February. So in March 13th, which I think we all re recognize that was the school closure, that was the day actually that we settled with CSEA and then it was approved, voted upon and approved in May. Because of the circumstances that we were under, under COVID and the other issues that we were addressing, we did not have the opportunity to meet and confer with our NMAA, our Certificate and Classified Management Confidentials, as well as our supervisors group. So we have done that recently. And upon review of that and recognizing that there was an impact to these groups as well with the implementation of the collegiate calendar, we recommend that the board approve for our certificated management one additional NR day that would be recognized this school year. Uh, classified management and confidentials, one additional vacation day, and our supervisors, 1.4% retro to December 2019 through June 30th, 2020. These awards would only go to those who were employed in those uh, classifications during the time frame of 2019-2020 and currently in paid status. So we want to recognize the work um, and the impact that this implementation had on these groups to conclude the 2019-20 um, negotiations. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, so may I have a motion to approve 15B? Trustee uh, Matoya, do you have a question? No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> Trustee Matoya. I move approved management confidential supervisor compensation benefits for 2019-20, addressing the implementation of the collegiate calendar. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Trustee Barto. So it's been moved by Trustee Matoya and seconded by Trustee Barto. Uh, roll call. Trustee Floor? Yes. Trustee Yelsey? Yes. Trustee Block? Yes. Trustee Barto? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Snell? Yes. Trustee Matoye? Yes. And uh, just uh, thank you, Trustee Barto. She has posted in the chat the the schools that are in the first two years and so i'm going to uh, read them off it's anderson elementary school kaiser elementary school killybrook elementary school mariners elementary school newport coast elementary newport l elementary um newport elementary pomona elementary sonora elementary wilson elementary woodland elementary and davis magnet school 
So those are the 11 schools that are, will be participating in the ruler for the next two years in training. Terrific. Okay, moving on, we have item 16A1, which was pulled from the, uh, from, from consent, and that is, oh, let me, hold on, let me read it off. It's 16A1, which is ratify and all city management services for crossing guard services at Newport Coast Elementary School for the 2021 school year. Uh, Trustee Anderson. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I was just wondering, um, I know one of the things that I've learned being on the board is that our budget and what we pay for reflects our values. And so um, seeing that on there, I'm wondering why the district is not paying for this, why the foundation is paying for it. Uh, trust uh, Superintendent Lee Sun. Yes, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Fulton if he can respond to that. Yes, this, um, this crossing guard service is actually, uh, in the traditional sense, not uh, what people think of as a crossing guard service, crossing a public street. This is on our own campus, and it's an additional measure that was requested by the parents of the school and has been funded by the parents of the school as long as it's been in place. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, one of the things that I would like to see, for me, safety should be a district responsibility. Um, I'm not, I, I think I've exp uh, expressed um, a few times that, you know, if there's issues, I love that there are parents that want to help pay, but I think that things like this should be district responsibilities. Um, there was one comment that came up um, earlier today about Sonora, um, which I have heard before that the, there's a need for a crossing guard at Sonora. Um, and when we were starting school, um, the city of Costa Mesa said, because this is a question that I had, I had asked them, can you provide us with um, which schools are being, have crossing guards? Sonora is not on there. It, it was considered a while ago, but they are not funding that currently. Um, which I think is a concern. And then also California um, and T-Winkle, which share a crosswalk. Um, there are several complaints from parents that I spoke with that um, there was one mom who almost got hit in the morning and almost got hit as she was picking up her kid from school. Um, and so I saw um, by Kaiser, there are several crossing guards. And so I was just wondering if um, there could be an opportunity um, for President Floor for us to reevaluate the opportunity to have more crossing guards um, and to discuss the partnerships with the city of Costa Mesa and Newport Beach. Um, I just, safety to me is something that I think is really, really important. This weekend in Costa Mesa, there was a pedestrian death. Um, there was also an accident outside of Pomona Elementary on the street where a, a car hit park cars and then flipped over directly in front of the school. It was the second time that has happened in the past six months. Um, there are a lot of people, it seems that, you know, everything is very um, chaotic and people are anxious and they seem to be driving more aggressively. And so I'm very concerned about the safety around our campuses. Um, so um, Board President um, Four, would it be possible for us at our next meeting to discuss this? and our partnerships that we currently have? So, uh, yeah, Superintendent- Ms. Floor, if I may. Yeah, sure, that's what uh, So, we obviously all um, have an interest of student safety, um, but I, I need to clarify, this is very important, that the uh, crossing guards that uh, are employed are not district employees. That's a, a service that the uh, cities of Newport Beach and Costa Mesa provide uh, that is not a uh, district function. So uh, if uh, they determine that a crossing guard needs to be added or moved, that is a decision not by the district, but by the city. So uh, that's a very important distinction that these crossing guards are not district employees and it's not a service that we provide uh, in our district. Because they're not, the streets are not the streets are not our property and our responsibility. Thank you. So, uh, Superintendent Lee Sung, is there a way that we can, um, do, we, do we know what the city's criteria is for selecting uh, sites or 
streets or crosswalks or wherever do we do we know what that criteria is for for both the city of Newport because they probably have different ones is what the city what the criteria is and perhaps we can get um, just a report on what their criteria is and understand that we can make that request if, okay. if they would share that with us but again that is uh, that it's is a city function. okay so we will we'll try and work with that and get get some information and um, and then the one with uh, the city of Newport Beach they already fund they fund a, a crossing guard because that's such an that's an unusual so the city of Newport Beach already has a crossing guard for Newport Coast correct uh, the city of Newport Beach often has a police officer uh, right. who who stops at Newport Coast Elementary School okay. Uh, but uh, I don't believe they have a crossing guard down at a crossing. Yes. Uh, but uh, close to the school, they often have a police officer also uh, a, yeah. observing what's going on. It's a, it's a unique, it's a new, new unique situation. Okay, so may I have a motion? Sure. May, may I make a suggestion? We've had um, countless um, discussions with both cities in the years past regarding safe passage to school. Yes. And um, could we or could you, I'm not crazy time, or I'd be happy to reach out to the city of Costa Mesa and find out why um, they don't have one. You know, because it is, it is kind of odd because I believe at some point they did, you know, have one. So what do you think? That's something you want to do. I'm sure. Here, I volunteer to do that. So well, I know that that's perfect because what what um, because we already have we have the city liaison committees with the staff and the staff and this would be a staff to staff. So I would direct uh, Superintendent Lee Sung to to put that on the agenda for the that meet the next upcoming meeting for the the city liaison committee and impress upon them um, our concerns. About about safety of our kids. So let's let's uh, let's work. Have them work through it, and then if you could get us a report, um, Mr. Lee Sung, that would be great. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, the city provides the crossing guard down at the location that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, this crossing guard is one that is on the campus uh, at the entry of the campus, helping to manage the entry and exit of vehicles on right the campus. The so right at the entrance, correct. Okay. Are you currently, you're not, it's like a, it's a, it's a weird intersection. But so I guess my concern is it's on our property. It's a concern for our students and our staff and our parents. So I'm, I'm, can I, I would like more clarification as to why the foundation is paying for it and not the district. And then my secondary question too is, um, did we communicate with the city of Costa Mesa and Newport Beach about our um, amended schedule for AM and PM pickup for any of our plans for elementary? Yes, we did. Uh, our director of transportation reached out to both cities. Thank you. Okay, Trustee um, Yelsey, you still have your hand up? Okay. Uh, Okay, great. So, um, so may I have a motion for 16A1 ratify the agreement of all city managers? Excuse me, I have a hand up. Services at, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Trustee Snell, I don't see your hand. I, see, they tell me that this, this thing pops up, but it didn't pop up. I didn't okay. see, I yeah, apologize I, yeah. again for uh, your hand is not up. So go ahead. Okay, um, firstly, um, I can't hear um, any of the other people that are speaking. I don't know what's going on right now, but it's like you're in a tunnel. So if I can't hear you, I would think most, I can hear you, Martha, but I can't, the rest of you guys, I can't hear you. Um, it's, uh, I don't know what's going on. Why? Mm -hmm. If I can't hear you, I don't think the audience can hear you either. Okay. We need to remember 
to I unmute when our headphones oh, are is off. Is that it? Yes. 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 We have to unmute when our headphones are off and mute when our headphones are on. Is that correct? Yes. And we, if we don't all do it, there's not enough strength in the microphone. Or we leave our headphones on and deal with the double noise in this room. Oh, well. Or you put your, phone, your, your, your volume up a little bit more. So. Okay. Anyway, so I think what you said, I, I could hear part of it. Um, because I know we have these meetings, um, liaison meetings. Did you mention mentioning the, the uh, crossing guards at the liaison meetings? Uh, that's okay. What I, didn't that's what it. I just, I just, did, that's what I said to, uh, to okay. for intent Lisa. Um, okay, because um, I know we have gone to those meetings before and mentioned the need for certain crossing guards and uh, have been um, refused. Uh, because um, the city is having some difficulty with funding. But I think it's important that the public reach out as well to the city and request um, crossing guards as well when it's, across, when it's across their property. Um, so anyway, that's what I was gonna add to the, to the um, conversation. Thank you. Thank you. So now I'm really concerned that Vicki did that um, Trustee Snell didn't hear a majority of that because some of it had to do with California and two angle, which is in her area and Sonora. So I just, I want us to make sure that we're following up on this, particularly mm -hmm. during COVID and if the cities are limited in funding things that, uh, you know, Sonora needs one and they don't have one right now, will that be part of their budget? It, I think the safety is really important. Dana, I can tell unmute. you. Unmute. I can tell you right now that uh, Bob in our tech room and Jenneth are all monitoring, and they have been posting if they couldn't hear or not. And Bob especially, he makes sure that um, they can hear. So Jenneth, if, if we can't hear, um, please let us know. Okay, Jenneth is saying yes that they can hear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Vicki, that you didn't hear, but it appears that everybody else, um, it seems to be the problem. Okay. And I see that this contract is only for one year. So I think it's something that I would like for us to evaluate for next year. I think it's something the district should pay for, not the foundation. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you. So may I have a motion to uh, approve the, ratify the agreement with all city management services for crossing guard services at Newport Coast Elementary School for the 2020-2021 school year. I make a motion to approve. Trustee Yelsey. Second. Uh, Trustee Matoye. Uh, roll call, please. Student board member Maddie McNamer. <clears throat> yes. Trustee Floor. Yes. Trustee Yelsey. Yes. Trustee Block. Yes. Trustee Bartow. Yes. Trustee Anderson. Yes. Trustee Snell? Yes. Trustee Matoye? Yes. Terrific. Okay, we're now moving on to uh, consent calendar. All I, uh, and there's uh, all items are listed are in, on our routine and enacted in one motion. So, uh, any questions? Everybody got everything answered. So, roll call, please. Good. President Fleur. Oh, I, I you want to talk one, about the amendment. Sorry I do, about I have, that. I, I do have one correction. Yes, Mr. Drake. Uh, to make on item 16B5, the service agreement register. Uh, I needed to make a, a correction to the, uh, the second item on that register uh, and uh, correct it to the creative mind is the service provider for the art and STEM uh, supplemental instruction for East Bluff Elementary School. It's just a change in name. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Terrific. So may I have a motion to approve as amended? So moved. Trustee Black. Second. Trustee Yelsey seconded. Uh, roll call. Trustee Floor. Trustee Floor. Uh, yes. Trustee Yelsey. Yes. Trustee Black. Yes. Trustee Bartow. Yes. Trustee Anderson. Yes. Trustee Snell. Yes. Trustee Matoye. Yes. 
Okay, item number 17 is the resolution consent calendar. There's two items on there, the adoption of resolution 101020, selection of farmers and merchant bank as depository for various accounts and district authorizations therewith. And 17B, adoption of resolution 111020 in support of the week of the administrator, October 11th, through the 17th, 2020. Any discussion? Hands up, anybody? I can't see everybody. On the floor, I move to adopt item 17A and 17B. Okay, Trustee Black moved. Is there a second? Second. Trustee Anderson, a second. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Floor? Yes. Trustee Yelsey? Yes. Trustee Black? Yes. Trustee Bartow? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Snell? Yes. Trustee Matoye? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Okay, moving on to the public hearing and action calendar. Uh, there were no public comments were submitted for this item. So I'll open it. I'm closing it. Uh, moving on to item 18, um, a public hearing disclosing the provisions of the 2021 collective bargaining. That's Mr. Trader. So is he, is he making a presentation? Good evening, um, board members tonight. Um, in accordance with AB 1200, the district uh, reached a tentative agreement on August 27, 2020 with the um, California School Employees Association Chapter 18. And uh, we're here tonight to disclose the cost of that and to certify the district's ability to meet the cost of that uh, bargaining agreement. The cost is 1,161,000 and $51, and uh, we are certifying that the district can meet those costs. Thank you. Okay, so there are no public comments, so we're moving on to item 16B. And that reverberation. Uh, approve a tentative agreement between the Newport Mesa Unified School District and the California School Board, California School Employees Association, Chapter 18, 2021 with a financial impact of $1,161,051, correct? So there are a motion. Move to approve. Black moved. Second. Trustee Matoyer, second. President Floor, could I say a couple of words? Oh, absolutely. If you don't mind. Absolutely. You can <laughs> say you. whatever you'd like. This Thank is you very awesome. much. I apologize. Um, I just wanted to take a moment um, to just highlight a couple of pieces of the agreement and also to acknowledge our teams that work to reach the agreement. So the highlights um, for, those, for those who are not aware is that the district was able to maintain the employee monthly contribution of health and welfare benefits to be the same as in 1920, the year 2019-20. Also a one-time um, off schedule salary to be paid uh, to our classified employees and also a $500, though it is tiered depending on the number of hours they work to maintain the connection with the district pandemic with their personal devices. And we also had some language clarification, which was very, very helpful to both parties. And I just really appreciated the open conversations that we were able to have the difficult conversations that we were able to have and the team. And so representing CSEA is Pam Saunders, the CSEA president, we have Stu Tepford, Sean Katz, Gary Logan, and Amy Gonzalez, their representative. And then representing the district is Sarah Jochum, Becky Gogol, and myself, and Kristen Clark actually takes notes for all of us. So I, I think that um, working with CSEA, we have we have had some really difficult conversations, and while this closes the reopeners uh, negotiations for the 2020-21 school year, I, I do want to acknowledge that we continue to work very very hard on the negotiations currently on the reopening, and so I really appreciate the dialogue that we have with both teams. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks to both of both teams for um, 
their contributions and their work in terms of get, re reaching this agreement. So it's been moved by Trustee Black and seconded by Trustee Matoye. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Floor? Yes. Trustee Yelsey? Yes. Trustee Black? Yes. Trustee Bartow? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Snell? Yes. Trustee Matoye? Yes. Okay, moving on to item 19A as stated. Uh, we do have two comments. So Trustee uh, Black, would you read the, the comment on community input? This is an opportunity for the public to address the board regarding items not on the regular meeting agenda via electronically submitted comments. Each speaker has three minutes of comment, read time, and per, per board policy, there is a maximum of 20 minutes of comments per topic. With board con consent, the president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public comments, depending on the topic and the number of persons submitting comments. All comments are recorded in full on the meeting video record. Terrific. And we have two comments. Uh, Trustee Bartow, you have the first one. My comment is from Charlene Ashendorf. On Saturday, October 3rd, our city celebrated Love Costa Mesa Day, an annual event thanks to Trellis. Hundreds of volunteers came together in dozens of projects throughout our city that included fully virtual, low touch, and safely in-person projects so that anyone could and did participate. Love Costa Mesa was, once again, an opportunity to demonstrate kindness while meeting community needs and impacting lives. Trellis and Love Costa Mesa Day faced the unprecedented challenge of our time, COVID-19. City leaders, families, kids, young and old shone brightly the light on community service. I served on Crosswalk's beautification project at Hunipero and Arlington Streets that border T. Winkle Park. I want to give a special shout out to the designers of the art, Costa Mesa High School students, Esmeralda Andres and Alexa Santiago. When we put up a call for artists, Kirby Piazza, teacher extraordinaire, helped to spread the word. I invite you to stop by and have a look at the beautiful, quote unquote, grassy mosaic creation. Terrific, thank you. Thank and you also, we want to give a sh oh, I'm sorry, Trustee Black. Um, my community member is Martha O'Meara. Trustees running for re-election. Please do not use vicious attacks that were used in the last election. They were disgraceful for a Newport Mesa trustee. Great, thank you. Um, those are the last of the two comments. I also want to give a shout out because Charlene, of course, we're doing the scarecrow. Um, it's virtual, I think, this year. But again, another wonderful opportunity to support uh, Costa Mesa and love Costa Mesa. So uh, contact Charlene. She's in charge of the Scarecrow. It's been posted on numerous uh, websites. So, Charlene Ashendor. I, I mean, Charlene Ashendor. That's okay. You, Charlene. You can send them to me. I'll send I, don't think, I didn't think I, I so I, I apologize, but it's Charlene Ashendor. Yes. So uh, moving on to informal reports. Uh, Mr. Lee Sun, Superintendent. All right, no additional report. Had my opportunity earlier in the meeting. Thank you. That's great. Uh, uh, assistant superintendents and executive directors, uh, Mr. Tim Holcomb. I have no report tonight. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Drake. Yeah, no, re no report. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Jockham, Dr. Jockham. I, I think you're going to hear a running theme here that um, we've already shared our portion in the ruler information. So I have nothing else tonight. Thank you. I think you heard enough from me tonight. So no report. Thank you. And then we have uh, Dr. Baumeister, secondary education available. Uh, I'm on mute. Sorry about that. Is it Dr. Uh, Meister or Dr. Sir? Dr. Sir, you're on first, I guess. Sure. No report, but I did want to second what um, Superintendent Lee Sung stated just as far as showing appreciation for our uh, certificated employees, our classified employees, our administrators, and 
Also, I just want to uh, also recognize the fine work of the, our superintendent, Mr. Lee Sung, and our board, because part of this whole process in opening the elementary schools is a lot of uh, really serious discussion, a lot of really lengthy planning, and that doesn't go unnoticed, so I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Bauermeister. Uh, just a quick reminder that the Human Relations Task Force next meeting will be Wednesday, October 21st, and you should be getting an update probably next week and uh, the, an email about that. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on to board member reports. Item 21, does any board member have a report? No. So, Trustee Black? Um, I just wanted to echo what, you know, everyone else has been talking about, all the hard work, and it was a lot of hard work. And especially in this unprecedented time, it's just been really difficult. Uh, for everyone to get their arms around it, but I appreciate all the effort um, in opening the schools. And I got to sit on the outside of Mariners and watch, you know, the little kids going in. I mean, they were very organized, very uplifting, and I was very impressed. So I appreciate, you know, all the staff and their hard work. And um, I know that it's just going to be one day at a time at this point. So, <laughs> but we really appreciate all the hard work. Terrific. Trustee Anderson. Uh, yes. yes, thank you. Um, I would like to request that we do a parent survey sent by the elementary principal to officially ask parents if they need bus transportation. I would like to recommend that we ask them is there a need for busing essential? Is there a need for busing needed? Is there a need for busing helpful? but not vital. Is it more of a want or need? Some kind of variation of those three levels. Um, I have a long-time community member from Costa Mesa who's been a parent for quite a while. Has a wife that the children are in Costa Mesa. And they were frustrated that um, this item was not added to the agenda, as I had asked. Um, I had some comments from parents I want to let reach out to me. This is a huge concern. It continues to be a huge concern. Um, and I, I want to make sure that you're asking your parents if this is something that they need. Um, it's our job to provide access. We are not doing that. It's a very person who is in your Yes, okay. This is getting information. They're not hearing what you're saying. Should we, should we everyone unmute and you don't need to have your headphones on headphones off and we unmute they can probably hear you talk loudly is every yeah i'm not on mute and put our headphones i can switch masks it might be my mask is very heavy duty <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry trustee anderson you were on a roll i just don't want you to keep talking no problem is this Okay. Is this better? Yeah. Yes. Now. Here you. Those masks are very powerful and strong. They're very thick. Okay. Um, this is all right. So, um, for my report, um, I would like to request that we do a parent survey sent by elementary principals to officially ask our parents if they need bus transportation. Okay. I would recommend we ask three different levels of questions. Is there a need for busing essential? Is there a need for busing needed? Is there a need for busing helpful, but a want not, not a need? Um, I have been, I have so many parent PDRs. I have multiple nonprofit PDRs. This is a huge concern for the West Coast Mesa community. And it's not for me to that fire district. And I have a huge problem. Um, it was also brought to my attention by a long time West Bay parent, Ms. Anderson. Sorry. They're still picking up, but can you put your your microphone right here? Oh, yeah. And then everyone else has their volume up, then we should pick you up extra. There. It's very, it's, it's super, it's super directional. This little thing picks it up. Perfect. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Just waiting for somebody in the chat room to tell us they can hear you. 
No, still can't, can't hear it. you. I still can't hear you. Can you adjust your uh, Can you adjust your sound on your computer? Mrs. Sunil said they can't hear. So, sure. Trustee Anderson, I'm going to let I'm going to we're going to move on to somebody else while you feel. Hear me uh, now. Trustee, well, can you hear him now? Can you hear me now? Yes. I'm not on mute. So tech support. Um, Rosie says she can hear you. Trustee Yelsey, you want to? Yeah, I just have a I just have a quick comment. I want to thank uh, the city of Newport Beach, and the uh, and Josh Hill, the 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 principal at the high school, for finding a good resolution to parking at the school because as the high school students come back, there is very very limited parking on Corona Del Mar campus. And so uh, Mr. Hill worked with the city and they came up with a solution that they will change their suites, street sweeping to Wednesday afternoon when no students are on campus. So other than that, they will be able to use a perimeter of the school for extra parking. So I just wanted to thank them. Thank you so much. Okay, Trustee Matoyer? Yes, thank you. I just want to, yes, I just want to. I had an opportunity to um, visit the special education classroom at Costa Mesa High School, which the high schools are not back yet, but special education classes, if they're on a high school, are. And the teachers and aides that were working in the classroom, when I was there, we knew it was all happening. They didn't know it was coming. Everyone was messed up. The students were messed up. Dr. Haley for the support he's been giving his special um, education classes. Okay. And I look forward to being able to get back on the school side to see the kids that's the joy of the job. Okay. All right. Uh, Trustee Matoyer, they're telling, telling you that you, you are going in and out. So it's probably because you keep moving your head back and forth and make sure that it's your microphone is the one that's on the, on the computer. So just, just in the future, this is all a learning curve for us today. Oh, yeah. If you, if you didn't hear me, I'll try again and I'll hold my face straight on my computer and just thank those to the high school, the teachers, and the special education staff who are good, fabulous, everyone did everything the right way. And thank you, Dr. Haley, for the support you are giving to those classrooms. Perfect. We'll see. Okay. Uh, Trustee Anderson, do you have your. Uh, our, <laughs> Let's give it a try. Third time. Okay. They can teach. They can me. I think we should just be massive and like. Yes? No. I it's broken. Can you hear me now? Yes. Rosie says yes. I would like to request. Mm -hmm. No, I think you can. They can hear now. Um, I would like to request that we do a parent survey on transportation. Send to the elementary principal to officially ask parents if they need transportation. I recommend that we ask three different levels. If your need for busing is essential, if your need for busing. If, if your need for busing is helpful, but a want, not a need. I have had multiple parents over the last time reach out to me about the need for busing for their students, their elementary students, under our hybrid model. I attention by a longtime Westside parent that has multiple children in our district that it was very frustrating to them that Despite multiple requests by me to have this on the agenda, it was not added. And he could not understand how it was possible that an issue as important as safe 
access to school, A, wasn't considered as vital in the reopening plans of our elementary school, and B, that despite a request by a board member asking for this issue, that it was not added to our agenda and discussed. He also pointed out to me, this was a long-standing problem that he felt was a result of a lack of leadership opportunities by this school board to have a West Side board president, he said, in over 25 years. When something as important about bus transportation cannot get added to an agenda, there is a clear problem with trusting and listening to our community. Please do a parent survey on bus transportation immediately. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee Anderson. Uh, again, um, you are one board member. I will uh, take it under advisement with the rest of the board on whether they want to have this conversation um, and have this agendized. Uh, you can't direct, as well as the rem reminder that we have had conversations on numerous occasions regarding transportation. So if you all would just email me um, and let me know because we, it's not on the agenda. We may not take any action on this item tonight, including putting it on agenda. So if you will email me, please, uh, your response. Um, actually, email it to Dr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Superintendent Lee Sung um, so that we can, um, it, whatever the, the board decides as a whole, majority rules. Okay. Or uh, if we don't have, we don't have, I, I appreciate that, but also, the district administration can just decide to do a parent survey on transportation. We don't, we don't need to put it on an agenda to do that. And that's not, uh, that's not our role is to direct. So moving on, uh, I have no report at this point in time other than to thank again. Oh, Trustee Barto, I'm sorry. Uh, your, your report, please. Yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to just thank all the teachers uh, and staff for the very hard work that they went into the reopening for elementary. Um, it has, oh, and yeah, I think Ashley, if you could put yourself on mute, sorry. Oh, you're, okay. Um, anyways, I want to thank everyone very much. It went very smoothly. My kids were really um, happy and they were really excited to be back at school and see their teachers. Um, my favorite comment was from a friend's kindergarten daughter who when asked how the day went, her answer was, oh, they kept their masks on all day long. That was her, her number one takeaway. So I thought that was um, cute. Um, at any rate, thank you so much. Um, wanted to give a quick legislative update. We have elections coming up and we have no, uh, the legislature is uh, not in session until after the election. So if we won't have any updates in terms of bills that are passed there, it's all up to the voters on November 3rd. And then as um, Harbor Council PTA mentioned, uh, as the techie of the group, I organized their uh, webinar for the um, candidate forum, which I think everyone should attend. We have up to a thousand attendees, um, which I think is pretty cool because up till, I think Harper could fix, fit a maximum of 150 people and um, this will allow up to a thousand people to attend if they wish. And just in full disclosure, I have nothing to do with the questions. I'm just the, the tech support for that event. I want to uh, thank uh, Trustee uh, Bartow for visiting Newport Harbor High School. Uh, I know Trustee Anderson had arranged it, but Trustee Anderson was not able to attend. Uh, and so Trustee Barto, thank you very much for a meeting with the teachers and, and doing the tour. Uh, really appreciate getting that firsthand knowledge back from, from the teachers that you spoke to. And we really appreciate that. Um, again, I don't know whether it was mentioned, but again, our congratulations to uh, Susan Stokes for her recognition as Teacher of the Year. Uh, I know, uh, Trustee Elsie, you have participated in that and you were there at that. And I think you mentioned it, but I'm not sure. So. I know that the unions had mentioned it, so I want to do that. Um, and then don't forget to support our Newport Mesa Schools Foundation. Um, they are not doing uh, the Teacher of the Year nor the, the dinner. So we really need to come up with a solution for that plan because that's a way of the, uh, we, 
uh, the district recognizes our teachers of each of, uh, teacher of the year from each of the schools and their um, and the grants and so we'd really like to see how we can work together to come up with a solution for that group again we are um, we are finished um, I just wanted you to check did mrs. Snell have her hand up or down uh, Trustee Snell, did you have something you wanted to say? I'm sorry, I didn't see your, I, I'm having a hard time trying to see your, so my I hand. Will. <laughs> yeah, my hand. There you That's are. Okay. That's okay. Um, yes, um, actually, I did have a meeting with um, the foundation, the Newport Mesa Foundation, and they are planning um, on hopefully going forward with some grants this, this year. Um, well, they'll actually be given in 2021, but um, okay. yeah, so they are planning and uh, they're going to be meeting with um, um, either um, superintendent or um, a designate, designate to uh, talk about the parameters because everything has changed so much, um, not just, just this year, but in general on what can be funded and um, so uh, they will be meeting about that, but thank you for mentioning that um, because yes, they do need uh, your donations and your membership in, in their foundation. The first foundation of uh, Newport Mesa, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. Um, I also wanted to, um, uh, Trustee Anderson was kind of going in and out, um, but I thought I heard her say that there was not a president from Area 7 on the west side and there has been several presidents from there if that's what she said i could be mistaken i thought that's what she said great thank you and at thank least you. 25 years no 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 that's not true thank I, you i didn't the parent thank you. Me that. if there's not then i would love to know who it was well i know mr davenport i'll, I'll email you it was mr davenport most recently most recently okay thank you for that thank you okay so we are moving on um uh we don't have any uh, crop re crop has no report you did your uh report on uh legislation and uh, we are going to reconvene into closed session at this so once we adjourn we will um board members you will click into the the new the other one the closed session one uh, and there will be no report out after that. So, all right. So with that, may I have a motion to adjourn? It's been moved by Trustee uh, Black and seconded by? Second. Everybody. Trustee Yelsey. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Have a lovely weekend. Bye.